We found you, buddy. We found you. African. You need something? No, I'm good. No. We're doing good. I'm up. Sorry. Oh, he's so sweet. I was just saying we're doing good, you know? Behind every insurance policy, there's a salesman. Lester. Hey, I give you Insurance Salesman of the Year 2007, Lester Nygaard. This is a little haircut. Those of you that know me know it's been a, a tough year for me personally and that I wouldn't have gotten through it without the love and support of my beautiful wife, Linda. Let's give her a hand. <laughs> he married inside a year? Wow. And if this year has taught me anything, believe me, I've seen it all, is that the worst does happen. And you need to be insured. Thank you so much. It's a great honor. Wow. You tired? Oh, aren't you? Wow. Um, no, actually, I'm feeling pretty keyed up. You know what? I might grab a nightcap at the bar. Nice to meet you and everything. And I get ready to get my milk can chocolate. Stick it in my old thing. <laughs> <laughs> and it hurt, but I don't know what it's doing. So I have to leave my car here. Fantastic. Wow. That was really good. That was a really good episode. Oh man. I don't know why. That might have been my favourite ever episode of this programme. I have no idea why. I love the time jump. We've got, you know, Molly all settled down with Gus Grimley and um, Greta. And things look really, really good, except Molly is still stuck on the case. And I don't blame her. We have, um, you know, everyone's kind of moved on. They're putting it behind them. They're getting on with their lives. And uh, Lester is... 
Leicester is thinking he has got everything in the bag. He's married again. Um to no doubt in his world he's like oh yeah i've you know upgraded the wife you know this one's really pretty and all this kind of stuff she seems to really like him um but he's clearly still just trying to he's trying to be lord malvo i think in his mind he's lord malvo he's like taking on his traits so you know whatever he wants he gets you know, he sees a sees a good looking woman walk past when he's getting in the elevator with the wife and he's like Yeah, I'm gonna go chase that. Just give the wife his excuse and then, you know. And I think he's really in his element at that bar. She's looking at him, he's looking at her, he's thinking, Yep, yeah, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna have this amazing night and and then he looks around and there is Lord Malvo sitting there. On a scale from one to ten, my friend, you're fucked. Lord Malvo has had a bit of a, a fashion upgrade himself. He's going with the silver fox look now. And it's, you know, it's obviously him or Lester's seeing him everywhere, but I, that looked like Lord Malvo to me. Obviously, Mr. Numbers, or whichever one is still alive, is um, the deaf man anyway, he's still out there because Lorne let him go. Lorne wasn't about to let the cops have him. It was really an offer that the Fargo deaf man couldn't really refuse because one, it meant that he would be free. So he'd actually have a chance of getting away from the cops and not spending the rest of his life in prison. But also he sweetened the deal by saying, hey, come find me. So not only is he free, but he's free to get justice for his dead friend. So I want that whole thing circled. That was really fun. I love the fact we've had a time jump. I want Lester to get his comeuppance, especially now he's really felt like he's won. It's almost better that he'd have this like, I won. No, you didn't. And then prison's going to be extra shit. I think that's it for now. But I really, I feel like the show stepped up a gear last episode. And I feel like it continued that gear up this episode. Feels like suddenly we've accelerated. It felt like we were moving very, very slowly in the first part of the season. And now we've got some time moving and um, some real, you know, proper developments. Which is really great to see. The cinematography has been insane I'm really liking that. The way that they're moving between scenes and moving between... That time jump where it just went off with Gus talking, but then the camera just flew off to, to like, the left and just, like, kept going. It was his right, our left. It just kept on going with his voice gradually kind of quieting. And then suddenly it's a year later and he's in a postman van. That was fantastic. I also like the picture on the wall, um thing too in Lester's office but yeah great episode and of course the opening itself which is I've just realized there's a bit of symmetry there anyway fabulous fabulous episode until the next time bye bye